Um, must know where yeah, without saying it. Exactly, like the, the best backdrop in Dubai. So the first thing that I want to ask you about is the duck. Um, so for our listeners, um, I was fortunate enough to travel to Bangkok last year mm -hmm. on a fantastic foodie extravaganza trip. Mm -hmm. um, and I met Chef Pam and went to her restaurant, Patong. And I had probably, I mean, the best duck that I've ever eaten in the world. And I'm talking like that's having visited 70 countries mm -hmm. and Honestly, I whoever I tell about the trip, I'm like, you have to go to Patong. You have to have the duck. So can we talk in great detail? That's the first thing I want to hear about. Mm -hmm. um, and to tell our listeners the story of your duck. Duck is a very versatile um, ingredient. Uh, whether it's French food, it's Chinese, Thai, Indian or whatever, it's duck is in its cuisine. So it was, you know, try and error of different methods. Uh, I tried French, I tried Thai, uh, I tried like the uh, Chinese method. And, and I tried like modern way also. And I feel some, I like sometimes, you know, when I try things, I like the skin, but I don't like the meat. Sometimes I love the meat, but the skin is not crispy. So it took me a long time to really... Uh, come across to the duck that I like. So it's a combination of Chinese, French, and Thai combined together. I mean, the, the process of doing it. And it has to be a specific, you know, size and a specific farm and a specific drying um, time. Okay. And it, it's very simple as I'm talking now because I found it already. <laughs> yeah. So what we do is we select a duck that is quite young, two kilos, very young, like very small. Mm -hmm. And because I like the skin that is not too fatty, uh, but some Chinese, you know, restaurant, they use the big one because they want the fat in the duck. But mm -hmm. for my recipe, it has to, has like a thin uh, fat layers with uh, not too thick uh, skin layers also. And the skin has to be nice and intact, you know, no tearing or anything of that. And then we glaze it. Uh, we glaze with uh, vinegar, mm -hmm. uh, maltose, and some soy sauce just to, you know, coat that uh, skin. And then we hang it for 14 days until that, you know, uh, glaze is dried as well as the skin dry out. So mm -hmm. after 14 days, when I touch the skin, it's like rubber. Okay. Like you cannot... You cannot feel any moist in it unless, uh, except the fat that leaks out a little bit. And then roast it for 12 minutes, uh, high heat, rest it, and that's it. Wow. When it comes out right, the perfect way that I, you know, I like, it's it's just delicious. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> and I think um, when you say, you know, simple, I, I've heard, I mean, Patong means simple, right? The name yes, of the restaurant. Correct, yes. And I think, you know, all that effort, like there's so much, so much research and trial and error, as you say, yes. and hard work that goes into mm. each dish. Um, and then you end up with something that, you know, you're describing as simple, but people need to know mm -hmm. all that's gone in behind these dishes, you know, and you've got 20 dishes on your tasting yes. menu, right? Yes. So that's a lot of work. Quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, and so let's talk a little bit about the overall menu. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that you're focusing on the five senses um, and the five elements. So when we designed the concept of Potong, it's like my dream restaurant and... Um, it has to be in that building because the building has a lot of heritage, belongs to my family. I'm the fifth generation. It's been there for 120 years old. And so I think that people who come and dine at Potong, I don't want them to just come and eat, getting full and go home. I think the building and the food that we offer must be more than that. So I want the experience of Potong to be memorable to be um, a journey and experience that people you know travel back in time hear about the stories of the heritage of my family of the way of living of people back then of the culture so um, it's a very experiential um, dining experience that I want the customer to feel so that's where the five senses come in 
uh, you know, the smell, the sight, the taste, the stories of hearing the stories, and then the touch. So I have a lot of food that needs, you know, your hands to eat it because I came across this book when I have my daughter. And it says that if you want a kid to remember something, all the five senses have to happen at once. Okay. Yeah. In order for the kids to remember at the back of their brain, which is like a long-term memory. So, for, for example, uh, teaching to remember an apple, mm -hmm. you cannot just show a picture. Mm. You have to show a real apple, let her taste it, mm -hmm. let uh, talk about it, let her smell, and then let her touch it. So it's all that senses that I... I use the concept of teaching a, a child to, you know, convert into a restaurant and to create memories of mm -hmm. the guests at the restaurant. So that's where the five senses, you know, come about. And then the five uh, elements is, I think, it's not just, you know, I just come up with it. It's about uh, when I started cooking all along and, you know, uh, every chef needs time to really see their own style of cooking and so at Potong I thought back like what I like to do and what elements I always you know touch upon whenever I create a menu and that's are the the texture my lot reaction salt you know acid mm -hmm. and all that so I think uh, with you know the five senses and the five elements when combined I hope that guests will get uh, very memorable experiential dining experience with us well i can so, vouch for it that's yes. it's stuck in my memory <laughs> and good memories so yeah. yeah so when we met uh we you know we were on this trip sort of discovering bangkok's dining scene and mm -hmm. we did fine dining you took us to street restaurants mm -hmm. um and i loved that and it was me and a bunch of international food journalists what and I know you do a lot of these these trips that you're part of. Mm -hmm. um, how would you describe Bangkok's dining scene at the moment? Um, I don't know. For me, it was vibrant and dynamic, Very. and it changed so much. I think Thailand now is one of the world destination to, for food, mm -hmm. and it's a great great thing because it you know motivate us and it grows the country as a whole also. And Thai food is amazing. Uh, we want the world to know that Thai food is not just tom yam. Yeah. It's it's a lot more than that. And to be able to really understand it, you have to travel to Thailand to see the northern food and the southern, which is totally different. And then central, northeastern, and then Thai Chinese. Mm -hmm. So we have so many, you know, uh, levels level of spices as well. Is Thai food is not always spicy. And to be able to bring people to Thailand and to show around, uh, not just fine dining, but even in markets, because I feel like the culture, you can see most of the culture in the local markets. Mm -hmm. You can see what they're doing and what people grow in the local markets. So I think it's amazing now. Uh, a lot of young you know, chefs uh, have a lot of, you know, dreams, a lot of motivation to do something of their own, to do their cuisine. Mm -hmm. uh, if talking 10 years back, fine dining is just, you know, French food, Japanese, Italian. Mm -hmm. Thai people don't pay for Thai food back then. Mm. But now they appreciate it. And chefs are willing to do their own uh, heritage cuisine, which is a great thing. Yeah, so, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's something to be so proud of, you know. Yes. Um, you guys are really, as you say, you're putting, you are putting Thailand on the map out mm -hmm. there. You, you've you received a Michelin star. Mm -hmm. um, you're ranked really high in Asia's 50 best. Um, you've just won uh, or been awarded best female chef um, mm -hmm. in Asia, which is amazing. How does this make you feel like with and also the sort of responsibility that comes with it um, as being this ambassador for, for Thai food? Because you put all the hard work and you know that your team are pushing hard every day they believe in you and to be able to get these uh awards it just make you um you do you want to do more and more mm. every day and it pushes you to even try to uh do something great even further and for me it's just it's a motivation for the whole team mm. yeah it's yeah. it's great Tell me about the scholarship program that you yes. run. I, we didn't chat about that. Yeah. Uh, so last year, even before I got the Asia um, 
best female chef. Uh, there's a uh, AWC American Women's Club who who did a charity event at Potong. So I get to meet uh, the team uh, and met Val. So she told me that she's uh, it's a nonprofit organization, non government organization that raise money and support female young female to go to school. Uh, and these female are not even in Bangkok. They're in the you know rural areas of Thailand, and they are very poor. And they the whole you know the whole family earn only like five thousand baht a year. Oh my goodness, that's that's crazy. And she told me that with six thousand baht, which is six hundred, what's the currency? Uh, dirhams. Yeah. yeah, which is only six hundred dirhams can support a child to go to school uh, from start to high school. Oh my God. Only 600. Okay. And it very, it's, it's very, I would very touch my heart because I feel very, not bad for them, but I feel very sorry for them that they don't have the opportunity to even go to school. Mm. And it's, and I I think it's not it's easy for us to raise money and to be able to give future to one female or you know to many females. So we talk. I talked to her and I said I wanted to do um, a program that support female in food industry. So we came up with WWF mm -hmm. uh, WFW Women for Women program, and we do scholarships for not high school because they're doing high school already. So we do scholarship for college and uh, internship program, paid internship program. Mm -hmm. And the paid internship program is to, you know, come and work at Potong. We we have uh, housing for them because to be able to live in Bangkok is already difficult for them. Yeah. So we do the housing, we have meals for them and transportation. So uh, that's what we so we talk about that for a year and now we are able to do it. So oh, well done. Very small thing, but I think um, uh, what Val said is that uh, if you support one generation, it means you support the next three mm. because they know that in education is a big thing for them mm. and career is is education leads to great career and career leads to you know change in life of a three yeah. generations down so it's crazy the impact that that can have yes yeah. um let's jump to why are we sitting here with um you know in oceano yeah, um must know where yes. yeah, without saying it exactly <laughs> like the the best backdrop in dubai it um, is um so you are here because you're doing a collaboration with chef gregoire in oceano yes. um tell me how did this happen so i met him because of chef ton Chef Ton introduced us in Bangkok. So mm -hmm. Chef Gregor was in Bangkok, I think, uh, a couple months ago. And he came to dine at Potong. So after dinner, we were, you know, talking that he said that what you, what I'm doing is very similar to his. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really appreciate the whole stories of, you know, storytelling and the immersive dining experience. So he comments on that. And then uh, a month later, he texts me that, hey, uh, let's do something together at uh, Oceano in okay. Dubai. And I said yes right away because after meeting him that time, I look into the restaurant, look at YouTube of of the experience that, you know, uh, people have on the dining dining table. And I feel like because he mentioned that uh, what you're doing is really, really similar to his. Mm -hmm. And I was like... Uh, Similar, but in a more luxury way here. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, for him to invite me here is a big uh, honor for me. Um, so here I am today, mm -hmm. uh, but he's going to cook Thai food. So okay. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so you're cooking tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, dare I ask, is there any duck involved? <laughs> no. Okay, I'm gonna because have to I cannot bring the duck here, yeah, the true. specific one. Yeah, yeah, and we don't have the specific one. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> are you guys? Do you, are you doing some practicing tomorrow, or are you just are you, we're, we're just gonna do it spontaneously? Gonna do it. My gosh, <laughs> uh, you're so brave. <laughs> 
like today we prepped and he was thinking uh he said to me that he's a very spontaneous chef and the final decision is the day off mm-hmm. and the before just before service okay. and he was saying that he want to do a fried rice should we do one i said mm-hmm. yeah let's do it and yeah. so he's ordering uh jasmine rice and so we're gonna cook the rice today because okay. tomorrow best fried rice is you know uh old rice mm-hmm. so yeah. i told him that so yeah we're gonna do some thai food okay. with a little bit of you know what he's doing here um a bit of seafood and uh, the immersive experience. 